Bikini Atoll is located approximately 200 nautical miles northeast of Kwajalein. After World War II, it was used as a test area for over two dozen nuclear blasts. In 1946, Operation Crossroads was conducted. Approximately 75 target vessels were anchored in the lagoon to test the effects of a nuclear blast on naval ships. Two tests were conducted to an audience of reporters from around the world. The first test, called the Able Bomb Test, was an air detonation 500 feet above the fleet. The second test, called the Baker Bomb Test, was an underwater detonation directly underneath the fleet of ships. Between the two blasts, over a dozen ships were sent to the bottom of the lagoon. Those vessels include the aircraft carrier Saratoga and the battleships Nagato and Arkansas. The rest of the fleet of target vessels were so badly contaminated with radioactivity that they had to be scuttled in deep water. For the last 50 years, Bikini has been declared uninhabitable due to the accumulation of radioactivity. Recently, scientists from Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory declared Bikini safe for visitation. As such, the government of the Marshall Islands authorized limited visits to begin in June of 1996. The dive operation on Bikini is run by a Brazilian named Fabio Enral. He is assisted by two dive guides named Edward Madison and Scott Herman. The dive boat is operated by Renault Reimers and his assistant Rio Crian. This video is the first attempt to document four divers, the underwater wrecks of Bikini Lagoon. Now our first dive here in Bikini is going to be on the USS Saratoga which was a Lexington-class aircraft carrier. Now to get to uh, Bikini, you take an air marshal flight from Kwajalein to Bikini, the island of Anu, and then you take a boat ride over to the Bikini itself. From there, you'll be getting on this boat, which is a 50-foot uh, diesel. It's very stable, very wide, and it's uh, appropriately named the Bravo, which was named after the uh, Bravo blast, the uh, largest blast that was uh, done by the U.S. forces. It was a hydrogen bomb blast back in uh, 1954. Now there's uh, Doug going in. I'm about to follow him in. Um, you do about two to three dies per day. Uh, the number of dies depended upon what your depth was. You need uh, ample time to uh, get the excess nitrogen out of your system. For the most part, though, every dive involved decompression. Now you start out diving with 105 cubic foot tanks. Different type of tank combinations are available to you. And here you can see some uh, motorized scooters that are also available depending on what wreck you'll be doing and what area you need to cover. Now the Saratoga is the largest ship at Bikini. It's also the only diveable aircraft carrier in the world. Here we see the flight deck that was originally made of teak wood. In the distance you can see another one of those Christmas tree structures like we saw in the Prince Oinkin. The Saratoga was 888 feet long, 108 feet wide, and displaced 43,000 tons. And here's um, one of two 5-inch deck guns that are on the starboard side forward of the uh, island. Now I may add that the um, Saratoga had eight engines, four screws, four boilers, and was capable of making 35 knots. It was commissioned in 1927 and was originally designed as a cruiser. It has over 1,000 watertight compartments. This structure was designed to hold radiological equipment for the atomic blast, very similar to the one we saw on the Prince Oinkin back in Kwajalein. Now here's one of two um, dual 5-inch uh, deck mounts. The uh, Saratoga was sunk by the Baker bomb in July of 1946. It was anchored 300 yards from the blast and was hit by a 94-foot wave. And it lies upright here, obviously, in 180 feet of water. The deck starts at 100 feet and the hangar deck at about 130. Now this tower is referred to the island. It houses the uh, conning tower, the bridge, and uh, the signal bridge. It was located on the uh, starboard side amidships. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look inside and look for some artifacts. Here's a uh, safe that we found. It uh, apparently was used to hold uh, codes uh, in the signal locker. Here's some uh, banner fish. And here, this I'm not sure what this device was. It looked like it was some type of uh, speaker, uh, maybe similar to the uh, phonographs by RCA back in the earlier uh, decades. And here's some uh, dual anti-aircraft guns. This is uh, aft of the uh, tower on the uh, starboard side. 
And now we're gonna move forward into the uh, bridge area. And here we are at the bridge area, following uh, Fabio inside. And what was amazing to me about this was the size of the bridge area was so small compared to uh, today's standards. About the size of a uh, small bedroom. Here we see various electronic equipment. There's where the uh, ship's helm was located, the uh, ship's engine order telegraph, and ship's compass. And here's uh, an early radar screen. And as you can see, these slots are covers for the portholes. Uh, they were designed to protect the crew in the event of general quarters. And there's various gauges where you saw the uh, ship's speed and rudder angle indicators. And this is the alarm and communications panel on the rear of the bridge. Now we did a total of four dives on the uh, Saratoga because of its size and depths involved. This is our uh, second dive on the Saratoga and this is the uh, forward bow area. Those stanchions you see right there on top were used to hold a safety chain to keep people from getting uh, blown overboard by the ship's propellers. Here you can see uh, the uh, port side anchor still um, in its hold. And here you can see the anchor chain leading down to the uh, starboard side anchor that was used to hold the uh, ship in place during the uh, Baker Blast. And on each side of the hull, matter of fact, following the hull all the way back to the uh, fantail, are silver sides and string coral. And uh, they're always a pleasure to glide through. Now on this particular trip, we um, brought the diver propulsion vehicles with us because of the... Uh, size of the bow and the distances that we needed to cover. Here we're on top of the deck. Now those uh, diver propulsion vehicles are capable of making about 2.5 knots. These particular uh, brand are uh, scuba pros. And I think for the first time ever we're going to have another takeoff underwater from an aircraft carrier off the flight deck. Probably similar to what it looked like over 50 years ago. And now uh, Scott Herman and I are going to take a look inside the uh, bow area. This is the um, anchor windlass room. It's one deck below the uh, main deck. There's one of many uh, pulleys that were used to control and bring up the uh, anchor chain. And now we're going to continue aft and look into the uh, forward cruise quarters. Various things can be found, various beds, bunks, tables and chairs. And now we're going to go ahead and exit, and we'll continue on with our third dive on the Saratoga. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look inside the uh, forward hangar areas. The uh, depth here is about 130 feet. Now the uh, hangar area was designed to hold as many as 90 aircraft. When the Saratoga went down, it had over 700 gallons of fuel oil and 15 tons of diesel, and two-thirds of its ammunition. So when the Saratoga went down, it went down in a nearly combat-ready state. And as such, you got plenty of ordnance right out here on the hangar deck. What we just saw there were some 500-pound uh, gravity bombs. And here are some more gravity bombs and mines. you got to be careful. Uh, one of the most dangerous things about diving here in Bikini is not so much the uh, radiation, but it's the hazard from the depths as well as the unexploded ordnance which is all fully armed and ready to go. One of the tips to surviving bikini is to never touch or put yourself in a position to touch any of that ordnance. Now inside the hangar deck there are four aircraft. Three of them are Hell Diver dive bombers and one is an Avenger torpedo bomber. This here is a Hell Diver dive bomber made by Grumman. It's uh, in relatively good shape though so some debris has fallen on it when the uh, ship was going down and the aircraft um, kind of like slid around in there and the ship eventually settled and everything came to be where it is now. Here's the uh, cockpit area. You still see the control stick and many of the gauges, the altimeter and airspeed indicator. And now moving further aft, here's the Avenger torpedo bomber. This is the same type of airplane that President George Bush was shot down in during his service to our country in World War II. And now we've completed the uh, tour of the uh, interior of the uh, midship's hangar deck. We're now up on the uh, flight deck, and off in the distance there is the island, the uh, rear of the island, and there's a um, dual five-inch gun mount on the uh, rear 
card there. See a lot of damage and warping here to the uh, flight deck. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look inside one of the uh, magazine lockers for that uh, turret you saw at the uh, aft part of the island. Inside here is a bunch of 5 inch shells. You can see all the uh, shells right there. That completes our uh, third dive and now our final and fourth dive on the Saratoga is going to be on the uh, stern hangar deck area. Uh, it's in much worse shape than the uh, amidships hangar area. A lot of debris has fallen down from the um, flight deck. There's a lot of ordnance in here, but no planes. And it's also very dark. Here's a Mark 13 aerial torpedo. One of many that we'll find inside the uh, aft hangar deck area. And here's some uh, appears to be depth charges. And just behind those are racks and racks of Mark 13 aerial torpedoes. Now the reason these are all out and about like this is when the ship settled it uh, kind of like went on starboard side down first and uh, everything got jostled around during the uh, trip down to the bottom here, 180 feet bottom. Uh, these are some rockets right here. You can see the fins of the rockets. It used to be a crate of rockets, but the uh, wood of the crate has deteriorated now, just exposing the rocket. There's a light bulb to a lamp still intact. And over here is a 1,000 pound gravity bomb still um, being held fast. It's a fairly large bomb. You can see it has a lot of corrosion which makes it all the more dangerous. Here's some uh, further torpedoes and different types of ordnance. More torpedoes. And finally we see our uh, exit that we'll be using. Now once out here in the uh, main deck flight area, you can see where it's extremely warped. It looked just, just really warped. And what's happened here is when the uh, Baker bomb went off, it uh, took a huge amount of the lagoon up with it. When all that water came back, falling down out of the sky, it landed on top of the Saratoga's flight deck and crushed it like that. Now this is a uh, 155 millimeter howitzer cannon. It was an uh, army cannon. It was brought in by the army to uh, test the effects of the blast on their artillery equipment. Now here's another look at that uh, dual 5 inch uh, gun. And here we are uh, moving on the uh, starboard side. Here's the uh, bridge area. Uh, look from the outside and see those uh, slots that uh, provide vision and also protection for the uh, bridge. Here's a uh, large spade fish and here's a uh, school of giant trevally that hang out by the uh, island area. Here's one posing in front of those uh, dual Bofor 40 millimeter anti-aircraft guns. And we'll finish up this dive with a shot of the uh, island looking up towards the sun. Now the HIJMS Sakawa was a Japanese light cruiser. That acronym stands for His Imperial Japanese Magistrate's Ship. It was 550 feet long and 50 feet wide and displaced 6,600 tons. It had four screws and was capable of making 35 knots. Now the ship was just discovered last week by Marshall Island divers and this is the first videotape ever of the Sakawa. Now here at the bottom at 171 feet is a um, large school, maybe a hundred plus, of just grouper just hanging around. The ship itself is in pretty bad shape. It's uh, partially buried. It was sunk by the Abel Bomb blast in early June of 1946. Um, most of the debris from the Abel Bomb blast came down and uh, landed on top of the ship and buried it here. Um, it, the bomb went off less than uh, 300 feet away. Most of the ship is uh, crumbled with the uh, forward bow is twisted and warped. Here you can see the uh, bridge area which uh, remains partially uh, upright. And here you can see Doug uh, carrying a uh, 40 cubic foot pony bottle with him. Um, on these deeper dives we carry these bottles with us for uh, any out of air emergencies that may arise. Here's another view looking 
towards the debris area between the bridge and the uh, main part of the ship. And we finished out the dive with a good shot of a torpedo ray. It's a rather large one. Probably around a uh, five foot wingspan here, maybe about seven feet long. Now when diving uh, here in Bikini, especially at these deeper depths, we followed a um, fixed um, decompression schedule. We knew ahead of time what we were going to do. We uh, used our computers as backups. Usually all our uh, decompression schedules started with a 40-foot uh, stop, then uh, followed by a 30-foot stop. Then we'd uh, bring over to the ship where you see a 20-foot bar here and a 10-foot bar. At the 10-foot stop, we had an oxygen rig here that would provide us with fresh oxygen from the ship. The oxygen allowed us to um, rid ourselves of excess nitrogen much quicker than had we been breathing compressed air like we were uh, at the depths. And also while you're hanging on that decon bar for as long as maybe 40 or 50 minutes sometimes, uh, some neat stuff come by. Many times sharks, yellowfin tuna, and in this case, a uh, big uh, jellyfish. What was neat about these jellyfish was uh, many times they had a little fish inside the tentacles that would uh, use that as a shelter. Here we are back aboard the Bravo. As you can see, it's a very spacious dive boat. Between the dives, we uh, return back to Bikini for our approximately five-hour surface interval to bleed off our excess blood nitrogen levels and eat lunch. The food itself was always first class and was usually made up of uh, fresh fish caught off the outside reefs. Now the uh, USS Opagon was a ballot class submarine. It was 311 feet long and 27 feet wide at a 1,500 ton displacement and had a surface speed of 20 knots on the surface. Carried 10 21 Mark 14 torpedoes and lies here upright in 180 feet of water. Had a uh, 400 foot rated dive depth and a 600 foot crush depth. It was commissioned in June of 1943 and it has one 5 inch gun and two 40 millimeter deck guns. Now off inside you can spot some rays or sharks along the uh, bottom next to the uh, large shipwrecks here. Here we have a uh, seven foot nurse shark. It's uh, generally a pretty docile shark. It's not known to be uh, hazardous to divers. About the only time it's known to bite though is when it's being harassed or somebody attempts to uh, pull on its tail. Now what you're about to see is not recommended. Our uh, dive guide, Eddie Madison, gives a little pull here. Uh, just trying to provide a little excitement for the trip. I would have preferred he had not done that. Now, I'm not sure about this device, but I believe it's some type of range finder for the uh, deck guns. Now, here we are able to uh, look inside the interior of the submarine. What well, we can see is some torpedoes and some bed racks. If you look carefully. And here's the bow of the ship. Or I should say the submarine. And we're cruising on top of the submarine and looking down at it. Used to be a teak deck, that's why you can see the ribs from the top. And here's another view of the superstructure, the conning tower of the submarine. And you see a lot of the ballast holes used to vent air from the ship when it was surfacing or submerging. Now we'll take a closer look inside the um, bridge area, conning area of the uh, sub. If you look carefully, you can see uh, the ship's compass right there in front. And various radar antenna located here. There's the uh, ship's 5 inch uh, deck gun. Now, up on the upper left here, you see the ship's radar antenna. A little sweep there, surface radar. Now Doug's going to show us the uh, ship's periscope, which is still inside its um, protected housing. Now we'll finish the dive here on the Oppidon. Now the USS Arkansas, BB-33, was a Wyoming-class battleship. It was 562 feet long and had a beam of 106 feet, displaced 26,000 tons, had 11-inch armor plate, and was commissioned in 1912 has 12 12 inch guns which lie upside down in 180 feet of water. 
the keel is at 120, and the weather deck begins at 160. Now this ship was designed back in uh, World War I, and it's really interesting in that it has many uh, side-mounted cannons, which are uh, mounted on the hull above the waterline. Here you can see them. It's uh, really fascinating because uh, you don't see this in any type of modern uh, combatant. Here's another view of the uh, side mounted guns. Here's uh, looks like a 20 millimeter anti-aircraft gun. Now a little history here. The Arkansas carried President Taft to Panama in December of 1912 to inspect work on the Panama Canal. It also has a long history of fighting in the World War I and World War II. Here you can see uh, Doug showing us a um, 40 millimeter anti-aircraft gun. And now here's some 12-inch uh, guns located forward on the uh, bow area. Pretty impressive sight. Now an inside view of one of the barrels here. And uh, after in the background you see the uh, gun silhouetted here. We're now underneath the uh, bow section of the ship looking at the 12-inch gun. And now it's kind of eerie sight here looking at the anchor chains and the windlass and whatnot that you see here at the bow area drooping down, still being attached to the ship. Now an interesting side note, two fully armed battle tanks were strapped down on the bow section here for the Abel and Baker bomb test. The uh, Arkansas went down on the Baker bomb test and uh, at that time the uh, battle tanks must have been thrown overboard and away from the ship because there were nowhere to be found nearby. Now let's take a look at the uh, bow and keel area. You're going to see massive damage here. The uh, indentation uh, of the hole, it's um, it was caused. It was said that the Arkansas was lifted up and out of the water by the force of the Baker bomb test, which was, uh, blew off nearby. And um, as such, you can see this massive uh, warping and uh, indentation of the hole there um, as it was thrown out of the water. And that is believed to be 11-inch uh, armor you're looking at. So that completes our dive here on the Arkansas. Now, the USS Carlisle, APA-69, was a Gilliam-class attack transport. It was 429 feet long and 58 feet wide, had a displacement of 6,800 tons, it was a twin screw, and it was capable of 18 knots. It had one 5-inch deck gun mounted on the bow, and it was able to carry over a dozen landing craft or 800 troops. It was commissioned in November of 1944, and it was sunk by the Abel bomb in June of 1946. Here you can see us uh, using the diver propulsion vehicles to view the wreck. And uh, here's the forward 5-inch bow gun. It's in uh, excellent shape. And here's the uh, bow. You can see the uh, anchor chain there. Another view of the uh, bow gun. Now a close-up view of the bow gun. And you can see uh, part of the uh, forecastle area in the background here. See the anchor ladder. Uh, here's an interesting uh, shot. There's uh, ready ammunition right here. There's five inch shells ready to be put and used into the cannon when needed. Still ready, primed, and armed. Now here's another view of those uh, diver propulsion vehicles. I'm uh, about to show you uh, how maneuverable it can be. I'm going to do a uh, 360 degree flip here, something you wouldn't ordinarily do with one of these, but um, just to show you how maneuverable they are, I thought I'd throw that in. And that about completes our uh, dive here on the car style. Now I mentioned earlier about things to spot while you're waiting on the bar. Well, here's uh, two six foot reef sharks that uh, came cruising by. So there's uh, always something neat to see and do while you're waiting there uh, to uh, off gas. Here comes the man of the hour. Yeah. Did you get any video of the sharks? I think so. I hope so. Had a great one there. Scooters, sharks, uh, yellowfin tuna. Awesome. What do you guys think? Awesome. Awesome. That was a bad dive. Yeah. All right. That's a good bad dive. Good. Good dive. <laughs> Our next ship, the USS Lamson, DD-367, was a man-class destroyer 
It was 341 feet long and 35 feet wide and displays 1,700 tons. Now in this shot you can see the buoy that says Lamson on it. All the wrecks have um, a buoy connected to them that would identify them to keep from uh, damaging them with uh, dropping anchors onto the vessels. Of course only the uh, vessels that have been found have the um, buoys uh, marked after them. Now an interesting side note to the Lamson is that it was the ship that led the uh, search for Amelia Earhart in 1936. Now here you can see the uh, amidships torpedo launcher held uh, eight Mark 14 torpedoes. The uh, top row are missing or I guess blown overboard by the force of the uh, atomic blast. Here they are several still intact and fully armed. The uh, torpedoes were quite deadly during World War II. Um, it was through these weapons that they were able to take on ships much bigger than themselves. Um, it probably struck the fear of God into a, a battleship or a big cruiser because although the uh, Lamson's 5-inch guns were not much of a match for their larger armament, these uh, torpedoes were quite capable of taking down those larger ships. Here you can see the uh, propeller of one of the torpedoes. And here I am taking a look at a 50 caliber anti-aircraft gun, one of uh, many aboard this ship. Um, it's in pretty good shape. And now we're going to look at a little school of grouper. Cruising through the mid section of the uh, wreck. Here you can see some uh, silver sides. Now most of this uh, debris area that you're looking at right now is where the uh, superstructure and the uh, bridge was once located. Here's another uh, 50 caliber machine gun. And here's the first of two of the Ford 5-inch uh, uh, gun mounts. As a side note, the um, Lamson was involved in numerous campaigns during World War II in the Pacific. While off the Philippines, um, she was struck by a kamikaze which killed 25 members of her crew and wounded uh, 54 men. Uh, the superstructure from the forecastle deck up to uh, both stacks were completely destroyed. The, uh, the forward fire room was flooded and the uh, ship uh, eventually was abandoned by the crew. Um, it was ready to be torpedoed and sunk until a tug was able to come uh, by and it made some headway against the fires and the ship was eventually saved. Now here's a uh, 50 cal machine gun right here. One of uh, several 50 cals on the ship. There's another 50 cal machine gun. And here's a uh, 5 inch uh, cannon. This is on the uh, near the stern. Uh, artillery cannon. Now on the upper left hand corner of the screen you can see the uh, bottom of the uh, lagoon there. We're uh, heading aft towards the uh, stern of the uh, ship. Now when the uh, ship went down it was loaded with 50% of its fuel and ammunition. Um, it was uh, sunk during the uh, Able Bomb test. Here you can see uh, the dual uh, depth charge racks here at the stern. See many of the uh, depth charges still in place. Here's a view of the stern looking uh, forward. And there's that artillery gun again. And here you see um, two of the uh, K-type uh, depth charge uh, projectors. They were designed to uh, launch the uh, depth charges out quite a distance from the ship. So they had the ability to not only depth charge directly underneath them, but off each side uh, about 200 yards on each side. Here's another view looking up at the 5-inch uh, artillery gun. Here's another uh, 50 cal machine gun. Used uh, of course for uh, anti-aircraft fire. And now we're about to uh, finish our dive here at the Lamson. The last and final ship that we'll be diving here in Bikini is the infamous Nagato. This Japanese battleship was 708 feet long and 95 feet wide, displaced 43,000 tons, had eight 16 inch guns, had 18 5 inch guns, had eight torpedo tubes, and it was capable of making 26 knots, has four screws, and had 12 inch deck armor, had over 560 watertight compartments. It lies upside down in 170 feet of water. As an historical footnote, the Nagato served as the flagship for Admiral Yatamoto, the commander-in-chief of the Japanese Combined Fleet at the beginning of World War II, 
and it led the assault on Pearl Harbor. Of the ten battleships that the Japanese started World War II with, nine were sunk. The lone survivor, the Nagato, was sunk by the Baker Bomb in June of 1946. We're now touring amidships. This is the mid-level superstructure. It lies on the starboard side and has the bridge area. It was in this area that Admiral Yatamoto heard the famous words Tora Tora Tora, which confirmed that the Japanese sneak attack on Pearl Harbor had caught the Americans by complete surprise. We're now moving forward towards the bow area. The bow area has two of the Nagato 16-inch gun turrets. These gun turrets are 40 feet long, and fired a 16-inch shell. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, they brought with them specially modified 16-inch shells from the Nagato. It is said that one of these shells is credited with sinking the battleship Arizona. And of course the Arizona, when it went down, took over a thousand U.S. sailors. And here's another view of those 40-foot long 16-inch guns. It is said that the 16-inch uh, projectiles weighed over 2,000 pounds. That's about the weight of a Volkswagen Beetle. These guns had a range of over 20 nautical miles. In this shot you can see where the plugs are still into the uh, guns, as well as some of the anchor chain drooping down from the forecastle here. You also see a lot of whip coral. You can see that the uh, coral is in a direction which the current is predominant, although uh, while we were at Bikini we didn't experience any current. In this shot you can see the uh, number two turrets 16 inch barrels. These uh, main deck guns were protected by over 12 inches of steel armor. Now we're going to go ahead and proceed back amidships. We're going to be coming up by the bridge area towards the keel. Here's the weather deck upside down. Now we're looking out back from the superstructure and we're seeing a school of uh, dog tooth tuna go by. Very tasty fish. We did two dives on the Nagato, and this is our second dive. Here we see a silky shark escorting us down as we do our second final dive on the Nagato. We're now going to be exploring the stern area. And of course, the stern, like the bow, is upside down in about 170 feet of water. Here's the stern guns. And just like the uh, forward guns, they're 40 feet long, 16-inch shells and uh, a lot of whip coral is attached to the barrels here. Unlike the forward guns, this one is missing its gun plug. And now we're going to be moving uh, forward towards the midsection area. Here we're swimming between the number three and number four turrets. Now that we've uh, cleared underneath the uh, ship, we see another school of dog tooth tuna. And we're going to be proceeding aft here to the um, ship's uh, propellers. There's four of them right there. Now what's kind of neat about this is they're all made out of bronze and as you notice there's plenty of big fish here and lots of things to take and uh, the Bikini government has outlawed the taking of any of these uh, artifacts here on the wrecks. You're not even allowed to uh, fish anywhere near these wrecks topside. Here you see some uh, Moorish idols and that about completes our diving here in Bikini Lagoon. As we head up from 170 feet of water, you can still see the ship. About to do our decompression stops here at 40 and 30 feet. And we'll close out the uh, video with a giant Palawan jellyfish here next to the ship. About to uh, swallow the diver nearby. Take care and thank you very much.